Hello students, I hope you are all fine and in good health. Landscape of the soul, already uh, I discussed this chapter with you all, but it is in your syllabus as you know in post midterm. So let me uh, revise this particular chapter. It's a very, very important chapter and important for your post midterm examination. So see at the heading it is written landscape of the soul. The significance of the title is very important. Landscape of the soul. Uh, and uh, it is written by Natale Toverai. Now let us come to this particular chapter once again. As I told you right now that I am revising this particular chapter. So uh, I hope you will listen to this audio presentation very carefully. Uh, the very first line it goes like this a wonderful old tale tale means a folklore or a story wonderful is something that is related with amazing that is related with some surprising elements as we can say a wonderful old tale is told about the painter Udoazi who lived in the 8th century. So there was a very famous story. The story was related with a very famous painter of the 8th century by the name of Udwazi. His last painting was a landscape commissioned by the Tang Emperor Wang Zong to decorate a palace wall. So he was a Chinese painter, as you know by this time. So he was being commissioned by the Emperor Wang Zong uh, to paint a landscape related with a landscape painting. He was being commissioned for that to decorate the palace wall with a beautiful landscape painting. The master had hidden his work behind a curtain or a screen. Master obviously, here it is referred to Udauzi. So after he completed his landscape painting, he had kept his work behind a screen. So only the emperor would see it. So that only, only the emperor means only Wang Zong could see it. It might be a special treat for the emperor's eyes. So let's see what happens after that. For a long while, the emperor admired the wonderful scene. So the emperor was summoned or rather called by Udauzi. He came. He appreciated the entire painting. He was mesmerized by looking at that landscape painting. And he could discover many things inside that painting. What are the things? Uh, see it is written, the emperor admired the wonderful scene, discovering forests, high mountains, waterfalls, clouds floating in an immense sky, men on hilly paths, birds in flight. Now these are the aspects of nature, nature and human life both coexisted in the painting and uh, these are the things that the emperor discovered what are the things he discovered forest or woodlands he discovered high mountains he discovered clouds he discovered waterfalls and most importantly men are traveling on hilly paths and birds they are flying in the sky so all these things are actually been seen or rather explored by the emperor. Now there is a dialogue of Udauzi. Look sir, said the painter, in this cave at the foot of the mountain dwells a spirit. Foot of the mountain means near the mountain, close range, near the close range of the mountain, near the foot of the mountain dwells a spirit 
the painter clapped his hands and the entrance to the cave opened. Now it is a myth. Now these are the surprising elements that uh, we had already went through once when I discussed this chapter. Now since I am again revising, I guess you can all recollect that strange incident, that surprising incident that what exactly happened right now. That Udauzi clapped his hands and uh, surprisingly the entrance to the cave opened and he went inside. The inside is splendid. Magnificent is the term that is related with splendid. I repeat, dear students, the inside is splendid. Beyond anything words can convey. Convey means describe. Now the uh, inside of the cave, it is artistically excellent. It is splendid. It is mesmerized. It has mesmerized beauty. Now, it is very difficult to convey the interior beauty. It is beyond words to describe. So I repeat this line, the inside is splendid, beyond anything words can convey. Please let me show your majesty the way. Now Udauzi entered inside the cave and then he requested the king Wang Zong to follow him because he will lead him also inside it. He knows the way it seems so. So this line is a clear indication of that. Please let me show your majesty the way. The painter entered the cave. So it was Wu Daozi who entered the cave. Remember cave in his own painting. That is that landscape painting that he painted throughout the palace wall. So he entered inside his own painting. So I repeat, the painter entered the cave, but the entrance closed behind him. And before the emperor could enter, because Wu Daozi told him that he will lead him, he will uh, show him the way. But after he entered, the doors closed behind him or the doors of the cave closed behind him and the entire incident is happening in front of the eyes of the Chinese emperor by the name of Wang Zong that you know by this time so you see now what happens after that and before the astonished emperor astonished means totally surprised or you can say spellbound also and before the astonished emperor could move or utter a word, the painting had vanished from the wall. Now this is the most surprising incident. There lies the myth that before the emperor could utter a word because he is totally spellbound or rather to say he is totally surprised and before he could utter anything, the painting had vanished from the wall forever. I repeat, before the emperor could utter anything, the painting had already vanished from the wall. Not a trace of Wu Daozi's brush was left. Nothing left behind. Not a trace of the painter's uh, brush was also left. That means everything went along with the painter and the painting. Even his painting materials also disappeared. Painting brush, that also disappeared. See, it is written, not a trace of Wu Daozi's brush was left. And the artist was never seen again in this world. And that there lies the, the most extraordinary incident, we can say. The, the greatest surprise element and the greatest surprise element is that the artist was never seen again in this world. After that incident or after this surprising incident, the artist was never seen again. That means Wu Daozi was never seen again in this world. He vanished along with the landscape painting that he had painting uh, that he had painted 
being commissioned by the uh, Chinese emperor in during the 8th century by the name of Wang Zong. After that mysterious incident, no trace of Wu Daozi was found. So dear students, I guess up to this in the first paragraph, it's a lengthy paragraph. I guess uh, the storyline and uh, related with this Wu Daozi incident, it is very clear because it's a very probable part from which questions generally come from this part. So now I am moving on to the next paragraph. See it is written, such stories played an important part in China's classical education. Now this type of stories, they already had become a myth. Now this type of stories played a very important part and rather we can say it plays a very important part in China's classical education because this type of stories are read by the children also they are being told by the adults also and it has occupied a very prominent place it had already occupied uh, in Chinese ancient literature or we can say in Chinese folklore. So let's continue. The books of Confucius and Zhuangzi, they are actually classical philosophers or classical scholars, we can say classical Chinese men of letters or scholars. Their names are very important. Confucius and Zhuangzi are full of them. That means if we analyze or if we go through the classical texts written by Confucius and Zhuangzi, we will find that they are also they had mentioned about this strange incident. The strange incident, which strange incident? The one that I uh, referred to right now in the previous paragraph only we get to know about it. That is the painter disappeared inside his own painting. So this type of surprising elements, anecdotes or surprising elements, they are found in Chinese classical literature written by Confucius and Zhuangzi. They help the master to guide his disciple in the right direction. Now, this type of stories are interesting. They are very surprising. And this type of stories are actually written to help the master to guide his disciple in the right direction. Master here means the philosophers actually uh, had kept a record of all these surprising or amazing incidents so that it can lead to the future generation in the right direction. And obviously, in order to give them a proper info about the rich classical uh, Chinese art and literature, art and culture and all this. Beyond the anecdote, they are deeply revealing of the spirit in which art was considered. Now, one more important thing was that art was considered to be the highest form of creative excellence. I repeat one more time. Art was considered, even now also it is considered, one of the highest form of creative excellence. And the incident related with Wu Daozi, it attained spirituality, artistic beauty, plus spirituality. It went to the zone of highest zone of spirituality. And obviously, artistic credibility is also there along with that, that we should also remember. So there is another surprising story, but this is a very short one, but equally uh, important and equally amazing. Contrast this story or another famous one about a painter okay the name of that painter has not been mentioned but we can guess that this anonymous painter is also a chinese painter because we will get to know that there is an incident related with painting of a picture of a dragon and dragon and uh, dragon is a particular symbol of chinese folklore dragon so let's continue Another famous one about a painter, no name has been mentioned. Though in the previous paragraph, we, uh, we get the name of Wu Daozi, but here there is another important story, but no painter name has been mentioned. But let's see what was the another surprising story. 
and remember these stories are recorded in the chinese folklore previously it was been done by the famous chinese scholars and intellectuals like confucius and zhuangzi and it proceeded from one generation to another generation so uh, let me continue contrast this story or another famous one about a painter who wouldn't draw the eye of a dragon he had painted now the story goes like this that the painter he painted a dragon on a full scale and the important thing is that he painted uh, the dragon in its entirety except drawing the eyes of the dragon now why so and what specific reasons are given by the painter is equally surprising see it is written another famous painter uh, who wouldn't draw the eye of a dragon he had painted for fear it would fly out of the painting now he had a reason behind it and as i told that sometimes the artistic excellence it reaches the highest zone of spirituality i already told and see this is a surprising incident that the painter he had drawn the entire dragon on a full scale except the eyes of the dragon because he was afraid that if he draw the eyes of the dragon the dragon would come out of the painting and would fly out or fly away now he had painted for fear it would fly out of the painting with an old story from my native flanders that i find most representative of western painting now Fl <clears throat> flanders is actually a province in belgium now the author is saying that uh, he had another story to narrate to us or to relate to us and that is also on a similar line with this particular amazing fascinating story of a painter who haven't painted the eye of a dragon apart from painting the entire dragon because he had a fear at the back of his mind that the dragon might fly out of his painting now this incident and another incident uh, the narrator wanted to uh, wanted to uh, explain to us or rather he wanted to express to us and that particular story is related with his native flanders the place where he lives it is a province in belgium as i told right now and uh, he found and according to the author it is the most representative form of western painting remember the story that he would narrate it has some sort of similarity with this particular surprising story of a painter and the dragon and he's not painting the eyes of the dragon that might the that the dragon might come out of the painting and might fly away so related with this particular strange story he had another story that is more or less on the similar lines that is related to his native flanders the place from where he belongs so dear students in this audio presentation i discussed up to this kindly listen to this audio presentation it's a revision related with landscape of the soul because uh it is a important chapter for your uh post mid term examination and if there is any doubt any confusion do let me know thank you students thank you all